Bam, here it is, the Panasonic 8 to 18 millimeter Leica Micro Four Thirds lens here. Um, welcome to my channel, guys. Um, I'm gonna be talking about basically this lens today in this little video. Um, so for those of you out there that are um, vloggers, videographers, and well, just photographers that are considering maybe this Panasonic 8 to 18 mil lens, I thought I'd throw this um, some of this video and stills up on this video. I didn't really do all this actually for, for YouTube, it was just a family trip for four days, but for my own benefit I wanted to see how this lens with the Lumix G95 camera would perform as a really good vlogging setup and for stills photos. So um, I've done that and I, I really like the results, but I thought if you guys want to see you know, what you can achieve um, using this lens as a vlogging lens, so you're vlogging and talking into it yourself and also scenery video shots and still shots. Um, check out some of the footage here and just see how you think it performs. And, and also let me know what you think in the comments down below. Um, please ask me questions. I will actually read and respond to you guys. So um, do check it out. And um, anyway, uh, as I was gonna say, um, also um, I'm actually going away. We're going for a really big trip to Japan soon, which is all gonna be about a 28 episode um, video series on YouTube here. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to test this because I want to take preferably one lens only and one camera body for that entire journey. And we're going to do some really awesome vlogging and video footage all about Japan. So if you're interested in that, do subscribe. It's going to be really, really good. I used to live there. Um, now, most of this footage, well, all of it really is with the 8 to 18mm lens here. Uh, just the last day, a couple of scenes, I did switch out and put this little tiny 12 to 32mm Panasonic lens on to this G95 body just to see how that would look in a few scenes and a few video takes also. So you can see that as a comparison. That lens came with my little G100 camera which I'm recording this with right now. So anyway, check out the video and the stills and let me know what you think. And of course, do subscribe. I would really appreciate it if you find this information helpful. Subscribe and click the uh, like button. Let's get into it. Wellington waterfront. It's a cool day today. It's mid-April. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of a cool day, but still pleasant. And we're just having a look along the, um, the waterfront down here. I'm actually quite impressed with um, downtown Wellington waterfront here. They've got some quite nice, you know, uh, sculpturesque kind of things here. Is that a word? Sculpturesque. It's actually quite um, quite impressive. It's a nice, a nice walk along the, uh, the waterfront area here. Some quite nice restaurants up this area in front of us here. Hello, I'm Carter and we're at the Wellington waterfront looking at some amazing police boats and an amazing view of such a nice brushy hill with all these trees and nature in it. And there's so many houses too and tall buildings and everything. And there's so much to do on Wellington since it is the capital of New Zealand and New Zealand is a great and safe country to come and visit. What's up? You I've been away for like so many hours. You want to go to the oh. hotel already? Yeah. Wait, what time is what, it? Is it, is it too cold? It's not cold. It's not cold out no, here today. No, I just want to go. Yeah. Wait. Oh, look, they've got the kayaks out with the life jackets. We could go for, go for a little kayak. Is it warm enough to do that? No. Ferg's kayaks. Indoor, yeah. Indoor it's my little oh. Carter, my little traveling companion here. Oh, sorry, buddy. Yeah. Uh, what's going on? Oh, indoor rock climbing over here. Uh, very cool. So I actually thought uh, this is a quick trip to uh, Wellington here and we're taking our boys across the Cook Strait Ferry that goes from our capital city Wellington here in New Zealand across to the South Island and we're going to be going on that boat tomorrow but I thought this was a really good opportunity to, to test out some of this uh, camera equipment that we have uh, which is this uh, Lumix G95 camera 
and I'm pretty much exclusively for this couple of days using the Panasonic 8 to 18 millimeter uh, zoom lens here and yeah so far I'm pretty happy with the lens you know it's not the smallest for vlogging but um, so far I'm really liking the zoom range that it's providing giving me the ability to get those really nice um, you know eight millimeter at the eight millimeter getting those really nice wide angles especially in like the train stations and that sort of thing and even out here in some of the waterfront area and just being able to zoom into that that uh, 18 mil which is the 36 mil equivalent uh, is actually enough to get in and and do some portrait um, shots as well which is really really good <laughs> without even realizing it there i was actually just a moment ago doing that vlogging section with this uh, Panasonic 8 to 18 mil lens on the 18 millimeter uh, end of the lens so um, that gives you a good idea of even um, you know you are able to to vlog um, using an 18 mil um, uh, micro four thirds uh, focal length here uh, but I've just now put it back to the 8 millimeter uh, which is what we're looking at right now I am using a monopod um, as a selfie stick with this so I'm actually holding the camera out around about well it's probably uh, almost two and a half feet away from me actually using this monopod um, uh, here which is working really really well as my selfie stick so um, but again this is giving a really nice idea here of um, using this 8 to 18 mil lens um, at the 8 millimeter um, focal length which I have here so Wellington is a um, it's a very very hilly city here uh, a lot more hilly than, than Auckland that, that we're from um, you'll see out in the harbour here uh, well yeah a lot of the surrounding hills of Wellington a lot of housing and homes are right up on the hills uh, up and down so lots of hills uh, and lots of small streets up and down the, the hills so Wellington City is actually about three to four hundred kilometers south from Auckland City that we live in uh, and it's around about the middle of, of New Zealand about halfway down uh, it is it is actually quite well known as the um, windy Wellington uh, it can be very very windy here in the city um, today's not bad just a little breeze uh, it's probably around about 15 degrees Celsius here today so it's okay it's not super cold uh, we're just walking the waterfront here all, almost up towards the um, Te Papa Museum which is a well it's a relatively new museum it's a museum of the I guess the history of New Zealand uh, and that's just up in front of us here uh, that we'll probably have a wander into as you'll see it up here in the in the background there's Te Papa the museum So yeah, well, we don't come down to Wellington that often, but I must say, I really do like the waterfront here. It's uh, it's quite uh, quite picturesque, really. There's a very nice lagoon here behind us, which is um, which is quite impressive, I must say. Again, I'm just using exclusively my uh, 8 to 18 millimeter Panasonic lens here uh, to give us an idea of what sort of um, coverage we're going to get um, doing the vlog thing here. I've got the sun in my eyes this way, so at least you can see me. Um, but yeah, Courtney Place, this is Courtney Place, it's kind of the funky part of town. It's where the younger people come, I guess, in the evenings. Uh, tonight we'll come and check it out again when it's dark. Um, 
lots of eating places and restaurants along uh, here in Courtney Place. So if you do come to Wellington and you want to eat lots of, uh, well, especially ethnic type foods of all sorts, this is definitely the uh, street to come to to check it all out. And we'll put some, get some good photos of that tonight. I thought, uh, I thought now actually we're going down the other way in, in Courtney Place here. I've just put the exposure level up a couple of um, stops here on the camera just uh, since I've got the sun behind me I just wanted to see um, how this lens would look and how it would perform with me um, I guess doing a bit of a vlog going the other direction with the sun behind us um, and from what I can see on the um, on my little uh, magic monitors here it actually looks like it's um, doing, doing quite a uh, oh, noisy bus going past I think it's doing quite a um, quite a reasonable job actually with that exposure compensation um, yeah so let's I'm going to wander down here and check out a bit more of the um, the restaurants for us to eat in here tonight hey um guys what's going on where you going down the road <laughs> we're going down the road wow you're the best tour guide of it yeah. isn't it down yeah. the road over there too and what's at the end of the road Guys, where are you going today? Where are we going? Where is that the end? What's up? Off to... Oh, yeah, a pool with a ship. We're off to... What pool with the ship? The ocean! Yeah. Off to the ocean, Cook yeah. Straight. Cook Strait. We're going to live in Cook Strait. Cook Strait. So we're going off to, um, yeah, into Ireland now. We're going off to Pickford, the goalkeeper. Pickford. Pickford? Pickford. 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 Nice. Hello people and this is a ramp where people drive their cars onto, uh, onto so they can go on the cruise ship because this cruise ship is going to go to Plankton which is at the top of the South Island which is really cool and I'm going to go on there. I've never been on a cruise ship before and I get seasick sometimes so let's see what happens. I got a bunch of snacks. It's going to be about a three hour sea expedition. I know they said three year for some reason. And there's cool pathways. You can video here about the nice view and the ship. And that's it, yeah. All right, you can see um, the inter-islander ferry here that we're going to go on today is, is just arriving in at the um, loading platform right now behind us. Uh, this is the roll on, roll off area here where all the vehicles, cars and trucks can um, can drive in and load up onto the ship and I can see a truck coming up behind us here. Um, you'll notice that this ship is actually a, a front-ended uh, roll-on roll-off ship so you'll see that there's a, a very large trapdoor here uh, on the front of the ship which will open up very shortly onto this uh, loading ramp area here. Hello people and we are on this massive ship heading from Wellington Harbour to Picton Harbour uh, so we're basically going from the North Island to the South Island A bit more of a breeze going up here now, isn't there? Um, we're just exiting really the mouth of Wellington Harbour right now behind us. You can see us going out of the harbour. So, um, in fact, we've already <laughs> gone out quite away from the main part of Wellington Harbour. As you can see right out there in the, um, right out there in the background somewhere. So we're just about to head into the um, 
into the Cook Strait here. Okay, so we can see here at the back of the at the back of the ship here, we've actually got a um, a good view of the roll-on, roll-off section of the um, at the rear of the ship here, where you can actually see some of the the trucks that have rolled onto the uh, onto the ferry here. So when we do come across into the um, South Island here, into before we get into Picton, we actually go into what's called the Marlborough Sounds. Um, it's actually really nice and calm out here at the moment, uh, right in the Strait. But once we get into the um, into the Sounds, it's a really, really nice, relatively calm, really picturesque um, little journey on on the ship here. So I'll get some of that on video um, as we come from the main part of the Cook Strait here into. Uh, those Melbourne sounds we actually have to pass through a very narrow entrance which is only uh, around about 400 meters wide so a really narrow uh, little channel for the, um, the ship's captains here to uh, to navigate to get into the um, Melbourne sounds so uh, we will anyway be coming up on that in about probably an hour or so Here we are guys, we are entering into the Milford Sounds right now. So this is the 400 meter wide channel that we're actually passing through right at this moment. So as you can see, well, right out just to the side of us here, right behind me, there's only about 200 meters there from uh, the side of the ship up into the rocks there. So this is where we uh, hopefully find that the captain's good at his job because we'll go across and you can see right now across the other side you'll see that we've, we're also here only about 200 meters from the rocks behind us here as we go into the sounds and what you'll actually be noticing if you're watching carefully up behind us here is as the ship comes into this Milford Sound passage it actually needs to do a fairly sharp turn which you can see that the ship is doing right now as we go through this 400 meter passage you can see we're turning turning into the Milford Sounds right behind us here it's quite a quick sharp turn that the uh, ship is doing right now taking another quick shot here you can see right through to there is the entrance of the of the, the entrance of the Milford Sounds right behind us here now so we've just passed through um, and heading down into the sounds here now towards Picton it's probably about another 60 minutes before we get into Picton Welcome to Picton, everyone. So today I'm just back to using my um, 12 to 32 millimeter uh, kit lens here on the Panasonic. So uh, today's the only day I'm using that lens. For the last few days we've been using that uh, Panasonic 8 to 18 millimeter lens. Um, guys so there's some footage uh, video vlogging and stills using this 8 to 18 mil um, Leica lens here so just a, a really quick um, conclusion roundup I guess uh, 
to the video and to the results and what I think of it. I, I really, really love this lens. I love the fact, the fact that it's got a, a fixed front here. I've put a filter on the front, so when I'm zooming in and out, nothing's actually moving on the front of the lens. I just, I just really like that. It's got a really, really nice build quality to it. Um, I think you can see in the, the image results, even in the video and the stills, you know, that the Leica quality is there in the lens. It's just, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, in terms of what I was really testing here with, with that little trip and those um, videos and stills, I wanted to see how well this lens would really work with, particularly with this focal range as well, um, as a one-stop lens for only having one lens on your camera for a whole holiday journey that you want to um, do a vlogging uh, and that sort of thing with. And um, I, I'm, I think it's it's the answer for me. Um, just that that ultra wide going from that 8 to 18 mil, which is actually equivalent to what 16 to 36 mil in the old 35 mil camera terms. Um, gives me really the exactly the range that I want for the kind of things that I do. I tend to do my vlogging and video in pretty wide angle anyway, especially when I go into cities and I start doing little alleyways and things, having that really nice um, wide angle is, is, is fantastic. Um, and for me personally, okay, the 36 mil equivalent at the long end, um, it'd be nice if I could go a bit longer in that, but it is long enough that I can do uh, people pictures with portraits and, and it's going to come out okay. Okay, it's not perfect, but it, it does mean um, I can get away with just this one lens. Um, and obviously the other big advantage with this lens that you, if you're looking at this lens, you probably already know, is that it's got the, the decent aperture of a 2.8 at the wide angle. It would be great if that um, was 2.8 through the whole range, but of course that would then make the lens a lot bigger. And I can say right now from a four day trip using this camera body and lens combo, I think, you know, the size is okay. Um, it's really on the, on the top end of size that I'd like to be using. I wouldn't want to be any bigger at all. Um, slightly smaller would be great, but I, I really like the fact I've got that 2.8 aperture uh, on this lens. It's great. It means I can use it in even some relatively low light. Uh, conditions particularly with doing video also um, and so really that sums it up with this lens I really love it I highly recommend it if you want to do the same sort of thing as what I'm doing with a vlogging and travel um, I think you know I did try the old kit lens here the little baby one a beautiful little lens I think that's probably um, underrated really it's a great lens great results but of course it doesn't have the um, the wide aperture of the 2.8 that you can get with this uh, lens and of course you can't go as wide angle which is something that I I really like and I use a lot so um, so there you have it I hope you guys find some of this information useful again do um, throw some comments down and throw me some questions if you like and um, enjoy thanks for watching